Shinichi Yamamoto, he is at the moment here at, uh, at, at Ben Gurion University uh, doing a postdoc with uh, Jonathan Mejia. Uh, and I'm also going to send out their, uh, send out their latest uh, product. Uh, he was educated at Tokyo University for long term literature, but then escaped to, to religious studies. Um, since then, for many years, he has been a recipient of the prestigious uh, grant from the Japanese Society for the Promotion of Science. Ah, good, good. Uh, first, by way of Kyoto University and afterwards at Bar Ilan University. Um, he also has probably some interesting things. If you meet uh, Shin uh, somewhere by coincidence, he will always tell you that he found something new and interesting. So, some of his publications are also like new little things he found uh, on the field of uh, Sabbatianism. So today he's going to uh, talk, he's also going to introduce Sabbatianism a little bit and uh, then go uh, continue to the exciting part of the, the Frankist uh, story and the end of the Frankist story. The floor is yours. Thank you. Good morning everybody. It's a great pleasure to talk about Sabbatianism especially about Jacob Frank in front of the conversion experts because conversion is an integral part of Frankism as well as Sabbatianism as a whole. Even though actually only a small part of them converted to other religions. Uh, <coughs> first of all, I need to make a short comment on the definition of Sabbatianism. Frequently, scholars assume it was a single uh, interrupted historical phenomenon. But this assumption is not always accurate. In fact, so-called Sabbatians did not have many things in common. The geographical and theological variations do not allow us to call them in all-embracing terminology. Uh, so I would say Sabbatianism is just an umbrella term. We need to be careful, especially in the case of Jacob Frank. He has been defined as a Sabbatian until the present, but today some leading scholars of Frankism do not agree with this definition. I also think he is better understood out of the existing context. Uh, I'm not saying there was no such thing as Sabbatianism. On the contrary, it did exist, but at most within the imagination of the 18th century uh, Orthodox rabbis, uh, these heresy hunters believed there was the genealogy of the heretics, and they revealed hidden connections between the so-called Sabbatians. I won't go into detail about this imagined heresy, but the internal diversity of this phenomenon should be kept in mind. In this presentation, my focus is on Jacob Frank, a religious leader <coughs> and vulgar charlatan in the latter half of the 18th century. I like to examine the purpose of his conversions as well as the destinations of his long odyssey from religion to religion. My conclusion will not clarify everything, but at least I try to shed a new light on Frank's hesitation at the dead end of his <coughs> religious and diplomatic struggles and how he explained uh, these situations. Let me start with the basic ideas of major Sabadian converts. The first question is, who converted among them and why? I show you three major conversions that took place in the uh, 17th and 18th century. The first key person, oh no, who? Chapter B. He proclaimed himself the long-awaited 
Jewish Messiah in Gaza in 1665. But he was arrested on the way to uh, Constantinople to require the sovereignty from the Sultan. And then he was forced to choose either conversion or execution. Eventually, he denied his messiahship and chose to convert to Islam in 1666 in Adrianople. His conversion was not planned in advance, but he was threatened, surrounded by the Ottoman governmental officials. We have some descriptions of Shabtai Tzvi's apostasy from contemporary eyewitnesses. Uh, you can find one of them from an Ottoman court record in the handout. The text is number one, but I s skip it. The text is very interesting. Uh, there is also a famous letter from Shabtai Tzvi to his <coughs> brother, which was written just nine days after his conversion. Please have a look at the second passage in the handout. He seems really depressed about his deed, saying it was just a command of God. And now let me alone, for God has made me a Turk. Your brother, Mehmed Kapujibashu Otrak. This is just an honorary title, meaning gatekeeper uh, of the Sultan Paris. For he spake and it was done, commanded and it stood fast. But one year later, Shabtai Tzvi developed this passive idea with confidence and implied that his behavior could, uh, his believers could also become Muslims and under the condition he would reveal to them the divine secret that only he could attain as the Messiah. Let's read passage number three. My brothers, my children, and my friends know this. I understood this uh, with great clarity that the true one whom I alone have known for many generations and for whom I have strived so much wants me to enter the religion of the Ishmaelites the law of Islam with all my heart to permit what is permit and to forbid what is forbids and to abolish the Torah of Moses till the time of the end for the honor of his divinity and his revelation demand that I bring therein all whose souls agree with mine this phrase no doubt refers to his believers after the conversion, I will reveal to them the mystery of his divinity. This can be demonstrated with full necessity, strong as molten mirror. And you must not think, my brothers, that I did this conversion to Islam on account of an illumination I was given. Do not be afraid and say, today or tomorrow, the illumination will depart from him and he will regret what he said and will be anguished. This is not so. I did it myself, thanks to the great power and strength of true and faith. <clears throat> As you see here, conversion and revealing the secret are two sides of the same coin. Uh, we'll see later how this idea would come about in the case of Jacob Frank. I'd like to introduce you the most well-known follower of Shabtai Tzvi, Nathan of Gaza. He was a Kabbalist who claimed to be able to heal and repair people's damaged soul. And actually it was this prophet who enticed Shabtai Tzvi to proclaim his messiahship and promulgated ascetic way of life uh, for the redemption to all the Jewish communities. Nathan explained Shabtai Tzvi's convergence, uh, conversion one time, in mythical words, saying the Messiah sold 
descended into the abyss in other words into <coughs> Islam in order to defeat the demonic power down there this is obviously a mythical and allegorical way of understanding of Shabda Tzvi's uh, becoming a Muslim you have a passage in the handout from Nathan's famous article the Wusha Tanini it is number four Scripture says concerning him, and the Spirit of God moved up on the waters, <coughs> and the rabbis explained, this is the Spirit of the Messiah. The numerical value of God moved, Elohim Merachefet in Hebrew, is equal to that of his name, Shabdai For his soul was in the depths of the great abyss, darkness, clouds, and thick darkness were around about him. The Messiah too has extracted from it many sparks of holiness and he will finally sift the Tehiru. Tehiru is the lower part of the evil realm so that scripture shall be fulfilled. The Lord with his sword and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent and his consort, the crooked serpent. This is definitely Nathan's unique version of the census Christi ad inferos, mm -hmm. the Redeemer's descent into the hell of uh, Christian theology. Uh, later, I will compare Nathan's words with uh, Frank's teaching. The second example is the ethnic group of the Jewish apostate in Salonika, also known as Dumme in Turkish. <clears throat> they converted to Islam in 1683, following the footsteps of Shabdai Tzvi. Unfortunately, the social background of their mass conversion is not uh, known very well. <laughs> It is uncertain how a few hundreds of Jewish families converted to Islam without causing a great disturbance. Of course, they were not entirely silent about their uh, peculiar identity and unique faith and customs, but we have no external evidence of the mass mass conversion. I point out here just one of these unique customs. There were mainly three groups in Dome, and one of them was called Karakash. The founder of this group is a notorious Kabbalist, Beruchia Russo. Beruchia claimed that he inherited Shabtai Tzvi's messianic soul. The Karakash group is known for their immoral orgies, generally called extinguishing the candles. I was skeptical about this rumor of sexual ritual uh, because if you take a close look at the details, uh, the available pieces of evidence have almost nothing in common. <coughs> On top of that, an immoral ritual with extinguishing the candles was a typical prejudice against the Arabis, an ethnic group of Shiite Muslim in the Ottoman Empire. Sunni Muslims regarded uh, them as heterodoxy. You can see very similar malicious gossip in passage uh, five and six. So I thought the OG of the Karakash group may have also been just a prejudice. However, as I'll show you later, Jacob Frank and his followers were accused of a similar OG. For the time being, I cannot give a satisfactory explanation to this matter. Anyway, the thing is, Frank absorbed a lot 
from the Karkash group, including the sexual ritual, uh, poems, and justification of conversion. That's why he later claimed a special spiritual bond with Berugia Russo. The last case is Jacob Frank and his followers. Frank voluntarily converted to Catholicism in 1759. Uh, Unlike Shabtai Tzvi, Frank was never compelled and he found a positive reason to become a Christian. The conversion was a significant process for Frank to step forward to uh, the new religion and uh, to a new status in the face of the harsh reality of a lot of Polish Jews. Today I refer to a couple of important scholars, Kaber Macheko and J. Michelson. I learned a lot from their researches and I state some slightly critical comments on their opinions. Let's have a brief look at Frank's biography before talking about uh, his ultimate purpose uh, of conversion. In 1726, Frank was born in Podolia, the southeastern part of the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth. His father was involved in the Sabadian Kabbalah, and his uncle was known as a person who possessed uh, Rabbi Jonathan Ibish's Sabadian manuscripts and was detained by the rabbinic authorities. This incident caused a famous controversy between Rabbi Ibishitz and Rabbi Jacob Emden, which lasted over three decades. In 1752, Frank got married to the daughter of a famous Sabatian leader of Donme, Yudalevi Tuba, who made many poems praising for Shabdai Tzvi as the true messiah. In 1753 to 55, Frank joined the Karakash group in Saronica. The founder of the group was Berukia. His followers believed Berukia's soul was a transmigration of Shabdai Tzvi. And Frank took advantage of this belief and claimed Berukia's soul was in his own body. These facts tell us that uh, Frank was entirely immersed in Sabadianism, though we have to be careful or not to see these connections as a single line, because it's not entirely clear if they had the same Sabadian doctrine. For example, we have little evidence that Frank was familiar with Rabbi Ibeshitz Kabbalah. In 1755, Frank returned to Podolia because he came into conflict with uh, the Jews in Salonika. So he tried to find new followers back in Podolia, calling himself Haham or Kabbalist from Salonika, which implied he was authorized by the Dome. At the time, he was trying to unite various Sabatian individuals and the groups to create a new independent autonomous uh, Jewish community <coughs> under his leadership. In 1756, Frank and his followers had an immoral ritual in Lanskona, a small Podolian village. This ritual resembles extinguishing the candles of the Domme in a certain way. Frankists were accused by local Jews and arrested by the Polish authorities. Then people began to notice Frank's heterodoxy. 
so that he went back to Turkey, escaping from persecutions, and then converted to Islam. In 1757, in the absence of Frank, his followers were persecuted again for their blasphemous behaviors by the local rabbis. Here the Christian authority interfered in this matter. It was dangerous for the Polish Jews to have Gentiles interference, but Frank's followers made good use of this opportunity presenting themselves as contra-Talmudists, namely anti-Rabbinical Jews, believing uh, in the Christian-like uh, trinity and in the Messiah's divinity. The Polish Christian authority held a disputation for both sides to argue the matter in Kamieniec. The Frankists disgraced the Talmud in the dis disputation and finally won the Christians' commitment to provide them with an autonomous community in Podolia. In 1758, Frank returned to Podolia again under the auspices of the <coughs> Polish king, August III. And then he declared his own mission that Shabtai Tzvi and Berukia couldn't accomplish. This mission was not a religious re redemption, but leading his followers to a new social status as Christians. In 1759, there was another dip disputation with rabbis in Lvov where the Frankists revealed their messianic faith and again the Trinity uh, without being clear about the Messiah's identity. This disputation was <coughs> not the cause of their conversion <coughs> to Catholicism, but a condition of the conversion. By Christians, Frank and his followers were regarded as a Jewish group who was ready to be baptized, whereas the rabbis were pleased to know they would convert to Christianity because they wanted to pass the infidels from the Jewish community. That's how the conversion took place. Frank was baptized in the Lubov Cathedral and some 3,000 Jews converted. Uh, this is uh, the cathedral where Frank got bap baptism. Uh, last year I went there and took this picture. <coughs> but afterwards, Frank was arrested because some converts informed the authority that his baptism was just superficial. The Christian authority was afraid of the bad influence on the new converts. Jewish converts, so they sent Frank to the Częstochowa Monastery, Yasnagura, where he was detained for 13 years and attended Catholic service as a Christian. <clears throat> In 1772, Frank was set free from the monastery when Russia, Prussia, and Austria invaded Poland. It was the period when the partition of Poland began. Liberated from the monastery, Frank moved to Brno in Moravia. Around the middle of the 1780s, one of his followers wrote the words of the Lord during his stay in Brno. This is a collection of Frank's adages or dicta, which amount to over 2,000 pieces in total. They are essential for the analysis of his teachings after all his conversions. I quote some of them later. 
1786, Frank moved to Offenbach, a mine, and died there in 1791. He did not openly proclaim himself as a Messiah. In his opinion, both Shabtai Tzvi and Berukhia were failures in their redemptive missions. So he led people instead of them, but not as a Messiah. I won't go into details, but Frank believed his daughter Eva could play a messianic role instead of him. He frequently referred to her as a messianic figure. It is intriguing that the Messiah was a female in the Frankist doctrine. Okay, uh, can I take questions here? Any questions so far? This is an introduction. So, <coughs> how many times did Frank convert to other religions in total? He would have said twice, from Judaism to Islam, and then from Islam to Christianity. I suppose there were another couple of quasi-conversions in addition to the previous two incidents. He got baptism in the Vaux in 1759. In fact, it was not a formal <coughs> baptism, but a simplified one. Just two months after the baptism in the Vaux, he got a formal ritual in Warsaw. Pavel Macheko explained that the first simplified baptism was ex fontorite normally employed in cases of imminent danger of death. And that Frank succeeded in buying time by deferring the formal baptism. The second one in Warsaw was not a conversion in a theoretical sense. However, we have to be reminded that Frank's behavior usually had allegorical meanings I suppose he was intentionally trying to find an additional stage within Christianity by having the second baptism. This is not the only case. We can find another sort of quasi-conversion when Frank was imprisoned in the monastery of Częstochowa. He lived there as a Christian for 13 years a few years before the first partition of Poland, Frank proposed to the Russians that he convert to Greek Orthodoxy with 20,000 Jews if the Russian army set him free from the monastery. Ostensibly, it seems a proposal for a diplomatic deal, uh, but he might have looked for the next destination of his religious wanderings. In reality, the conversion did not take place after the release of, from captivity. But Frank indeed thought about it. It would have been a conversion from the Roman Catholic faith to the Orthodox faith. I'm not the only one who thought this could have been an actual conversion. The other one was Baruch Miyavan. He was a Stadlan, uh, or intercessor of the Council of Poland, Vada Arvarzot in Poland. He was one of the major enemies of Frank. Please have a look at text number eight. Yes, number eight. Uh, Baruch obviously defined this case as a conversion. <coughs> Isn't it the fifth faith they intend to change? First, they profess the Jewish faith. Second, in order to enter the faith of Shabdai Tzvi, they accepted the faith of Islam. Third, they became fully Sabbatians. Fourth, they were forced to convert to Christianity. And now they intend to change into the fifth faith, the Greek Orthodoxy. Baruch's enumeration is controversial. 
the first one cannot be considered as a conversion. They were just born Jewish. And the third one also cannot be regarded as a conversion. Becoming a Muslim is tantamount to becoming a Swedian. So Frank could have converted three times, including the attempted conversion to the Greek Orthodoxy. Eventually, Frank and his followers did not convert to the Orthodoxy, but still, they apparently wanted to leave Catholicism. Now that Frank found it impossible to convert to the Greek Orthodoxy after wondering about all the Abrahamic faith, he began to talk about the next phase. It is thus. Das is the Ashkenazic pronunciation of a Hebrew word, dat, religion. The word appears dozens of times in the words of the Lord. This is a well-known fact and almost all the scholars of Frankism agree that das was Frank's last step for the true religion after the baptism. Frank talks about das in passage number nine. At the beginning, we needed a plain baptism, Frank says. But now it is necessary for us to go to Das. And I am with you, except that I am already baptized and you are not yet. I think this baptism is not the first one, but the hidden true baptism only Frank claimed to have received. So it is likely to indicate the baptism of Das. Frank asks himself, why is that so? Because you are not following the one sent by God. Maybe he means he was sent by God. As you see, Das mattered a lot to Frank. And in his view, both chapter 3 and Berukia didn't succeed in entering this stage. Frank respected them in a certain way, uh, saying in text number 10, we should be grateful to the first who opened that new step into the Turkish region, and to the second who revealed that estate of Edom, which is baptism. As you know, Edom is the territory where Jacob's brother Esav and his descendants lived. But in the Jewish tradition, Esav and Edom are the symbols of Christianity. In this passage, Frank calls chapter V the first, and Berukia the second implying he is the third. He claimed it was himself that could attain the final goal instead of chapter V and Berukia. Let's read number 11. <coughs> but Berukia converted to Islam, no? Not to Christianity. Who was born Muslim, I think. Uh -huh. Yeah, he was he was a second or third generation. <coughs> so why does he stand for Christianity? That's a good question. Yes, maybe. Yeah, I'll say something later. Uh, Eleven. The first chapter is we called the two religions, the Turkish and the Christian, the two sleepers. From that, surely one can conclude that somebody will have to put them on. We don't know that the same kind of blasphemous uh, expression did indeed come out from the from chapter three's mouth, but Frank might have heard this episode in Salonika. Mm -hmm. Frank continues, he revealed to you a great thing that there are two, but he himself didn't know yet what they are, because he was not in that secret death. 
for it is impossible to enter that dust until one comes to Esau, Christianity. According to Frank, Shabtai Tsubi was totally ignorant of dust because he didn't convert to Christianity. However, it is interesting that Frank repeatedly says that Verukia opened the path to Christianity. This is relevant to the question of Alex. Mm -hmm. uh, it is one of the most puzzling points in the words of the Lord, because we have no evidence that Verukia was involved in Christianity. I suppose there was a possibility given the Greek population in Salonika in the uh, 18th century, uh, though they were just a minority at the time. Uh, there is no evidence that uh, he converted to Christianity. Anyway, let's have a look at a uh, unique typological interpretation of biblical passages. The text is number 12. Here Frank compares Abraham to Shabda Itzvi, Isaac to Berukia, and himself to his namesake Jacob. Here again Abraham is the uh, first, Berukia the second, and Frank the third. Why do you have no trust in such as have the power to change bitterness into sweetness? You should hope for that morning drawing near as it stands, Abraham anticipated the morning. Abraham pursued something. However, he himself thought that he would not reach it. Exactly as it stands, on the third day, Abraham raised his eyes and saw that place from afar. That means that he saw that place on the third day, and that is Jacob of whom it stands, he, Jacob, found the place. All this is meant for the present time. I skip a few sentences. The start was that first who opened Mahometan faith. Then came the second, and that one revealed the baptism, in which we now remain. And these are Abraham and Isaac, but Jacob is the third. This typological interpretation provides a structural view of three major figures and makes it clear that only Frank was able to realize that after the baptism. I'd like to make a few comments about that. The first is that Das also signifies hidden knowledge, like Hokmatanista, because a Hebrew word, that, knowledge, also sounds das in the Ashkenazic accent. Frank talks to the followers about the word play in uh, number 13 in the handout. <coughs> you have not come yet to das, since das is that hidden das, and the explication of the word das means knowledge. And if you already were in this dust, you would no longer subject to defect, to sickness, or to death. This hidden knowledge that is also that in the Sephirotic system of Kabbalah. This Sephira located between Hokuma and Bina is usually not depicted in uh, the Sephirotic diagrams. The key thing is, the hidden religion does and hidden knowledge does are identical in his teaching. So das is sometimes written with double A's, sounding closer to that. Uh, let's read text number 14. When the Jews enter the religion, they only enter baptism, but not das. Just as you now have come to baptism, but not to death. 
the hidden dot and the hidden dot are the same thing in Frank's hermeneutical vocabulary. <coughs> this is crucial because it is particularly when Frank talked about that that he became a mystic. He had never said conversion was a mystery when it comes to Islam and to Catholicism. In that regard, he was very different from other Sabadians. <coughs> if Frankism can be called <coughs> mysticism at all, it is only when he began to reveal the final faith and the hidden knowledge of death. Can I take a break? A Polish film featuring Jacob Frank was released in 2011. The title is Das. Now we know what it means. I show you the trailer. Is Pokrita? Okay. There was a scene of palace. Uh, <coughs> I'm not sure, but it might be Schönbrunn in Vienna. Frank arrived there from Brno in 1776 and paid a visit to Joseph II and Maria Theresa and applied to the emperor for the title of count of the Holy Roman Empire, but he did not succeed. Let's go back to that. The second thing I'd like to mention here about uh, his religion is uh, Das itself and about how Frank defined Das. Das is apparently the last religion and the last conversion for Frank. But strangely enough, Thus, all hidden religion is still associated with Esau and Edom in the words of the Lord. Both of them are the symbols of Christianity. Uh, let's have a look at passage number 15. When you come to Esau, <coughs> which means Poland or Christianity, uh, you will put on an attire. At the time, your eyes will be open and you will see everything. When you come to Esav and receive that dust, your eyes will, be, you will open and you will know everything and will see. You will have great joy weeping for that which you recognize as lost because of you. <coughs> Let me read other similar texts. Uh, these are not in the handout. Oh. 
Frank says, Now you are equal to all peoples, just as they don't know anything. So, to you nothing is known. When that terrible great day comes, then all the peoples will see. But you will see many times more until you become worthy to come to Esau. Then you will see more than the whole world will see. And when that does is revealed to you, and they tell you these two words, then all will know. But you will know, see, and understand, and you will be beside God. Frank defined here <coughs> Das as a transcendental religion, but the boundary between Das and Esa is blood. In a, uh, in a different dictum, he says Adam is <coughs> equivalent to uh, the hidden knowledge. When we will be worthy to come to Adam, all things hidden and closed up since the beginning of the world will be revealed and brought into view through you. The whole world will say that it was from God. For until the arrival in Adam, the name of God has not been recalled. At the time, you will see a certain hidden room which will be revealed then, and in it you will see chairs which were prepared for you and for your women, and one chair in the center. There you will recognize for yourselves, each one his own chair, and all that is perpetuated written on it. First, with great regret for the deeds perpetuated. Second, you will weep tears or rejoicing at the same time for great happiness. I think that is regarded as the next step within Christianity, not as a totally new religion. If my assumption is acceptable, he might have taken the quasi-conversion again within the framework of Christianity as a mystical step toward a much truer faith. Let me quote an allegorical dictum from the words of the Lord. Uh, the text is number 16. Here, Esau holds a key to understanding Frank's intention. Uh, 16. But you must know that at palaces of great laws, a curtain is always hung in front of the door. And before the door is opened, the curtain must be drawn aside. And likewise, Precious stones are generally hidden in little caskets. These metaphors of curtain and door and the precious stones and uh, caskets indicate twofold paths leading to the true religion. And such is the case here. Is there only one Esa? Frank asks. You must know that there is Esa and there is a second in front of him and there are two at every place, one to help and a second to harm. Here Frank semiotically argues double essence. The harm of life is hidden within the harm of death, but I wish that we might be worthy to see the essence. This is the uh, internal essence, to whom we go as soon as possible. For he who is worthy to see him will receive eternal life, but not that Esa who is in front of Esa. The external Esa no doubt means Catholic faith they chose uh, before the imprisonment in Częstochowa. It is compared here to the external curtain and the half of death on the other hand, the second Esa, which indicates the door to the palace, precious stones and the hub of life, is likely to signify the next conversion within Christianity. 
Now, as you can see, uh, Frank seems to say they need to move to a deeper layer of Christianity as soon as possible, though it is very difficult. There are several opinions about the meaning of das. J. Michelson argues about das in detail, and his hypothesis is uh, thought-provoking. For example, he maintained that Frank shares the same goal of contemporary Western esotericism, and that there are more steps after das. In other words, das is not the last. However, in the closer analysis of other relevant dicta, it is virtually impossible to maintain that das is entirely distinct from Christianity, as I argued. So my opinion is that Frank failed to realize or even describe das as a totally new religion. Presumably, Frank had a mind to leave Christianity and step forward to the next stage immediately after the first baptism in the womb. <coughs> but he finally found himself in a cold sack after groping for a solution in the dark. By the way, we should notice here the dichotomy between life and death. Uh, in Frank's words, death often signify Judaism and life Christianity. But especially in the dictum of number 16, death is the first stage of Christianity and life means the next stage within Christianity. Frank puts a special value on the necessity of passing through death before arriving to life. Death is usually equivalent to the abyss in the words of the Lord. Uh, let's take a look at number 19. This is a fascinating text. I had a vision in Salonica. I saw the first, chapter Tzvi, who also sat as a teacher with his students. This one immediately asked me, are you Jacob the wise? I have heard that you are strong and brave-hearted. To this point have I come, but I have not the strength of proceeding from here farther. If you want to, strengthen yourself and may God help you, for very many ancestors took that burden upon themselves, went on this road, and uh, but fell. <coughs> With that, he showed me through the window of this chamber an abyss, which was like a black sea, hidden in extraordinary darkness. And on the other side of the abyss, I saw a mountain whose height seemed to touch the clouds. At that, I shouted, be what may, I will go with God's help. And so I began to fly on a slant through the air into the depths. <coughs> until I reached its very bottom. Where having felt the ground, I stopped. Walking in the dark, I came up on the edge of the mountain and seeing that because of the steep smoothness of the mountain, I had difficulty getting up on it. I was forced to clamber up with my hands and nails and using all my strength until I reached the top. As soon as I stopped there, an extraordinary scent reached me, and there were many true believers there. Also in passage 20, Frank says, we must go into the depths of the abyss, and at first we must <coughs> go to the feet, and then to the head. Therefore, it stands, it is impossible to hope in the feet of the Messiah. The last sentence sounds rather enigmatic, referring to the Talmudic passage, in the steps of the Messiah, boldness increases. I guess Frank denies the messianic hope or the Messiah stuck in the abyss like Shabda Tzvi, and calls attention to ascending high from the bottom. 
I have an explanation as to why Frank emphasized uh, V curve while talking about life and death. In the shape of V, you need to go down and go up. This is quite unique. In Slavic folklore, there are several tales of dead water and living water. They help us understand why this rhetoric had an impact on his believer's mind. In these tales, dead water is used to reassemble a body cut in pieces, while living water brings the dead body back to life. Two types of water must be used in tandem. You have to pour both of the water to resurrect the corpse. But first dead water, and then living water. If you don't use them in the right order, the body cannot revive. So it's crucial to begin with death to reach life. In my opinion, this folklore was shared by a lot of local Polish Jews, and Frank was making good use of it <coughs> and put a stress on the passage through the dead religion <coughs> before, the, uh, before leading to the next religion. So getting involved in death or entering the abyss is an indispensable process to death. On the other hand, Frank might have utilized the dissensus and inferal theory of Nathan of Gaza. <coughs> but his unique version was not about chapters with soul. As opposed to Nathan's opinion, in the case of Frank, the ascension to life and to death, thus, is open to his followers. The ultimate destination must be reached through death, symbolizing Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. Everybody could join this process. In that regard, Frank's theory is different from that of Nathan. Let me state my conclusion briefly. First, that is substantially within Christianity, or within his mystical version of Christianity, even though Frank endeavored to describe it as a uh, different faith. Second, Frank was driven into a tight corner without being able to clarify the essence of dust. He reveals nothing tangible about dust, life, and uh, the ultimate destination of his odyssey. That's why this concept arouses a scholar's curiosity. <coughs> but in my opinion, Frank failed to define his own new concept in a comprehensible way. That's why it is next to impossible to give a legitimate explanation to Das, because Frank's words are frequently ambiguous and inconsistent. But I hope the analysis I made today will be a good opportunity to reevaluate Frank's idea about convergence. Thank you very much. All right, so then you thought you knew everything about <laughs> Sabathianism. Um, questions? Yeah, please. First of all, the technical one is the, about the text you cited before uh, Psalm 16. 16. It's, it's before 16. Uh, ah, okay. Mm -hmm. The source you mentioned that you don't give in the end. Mm -hmm. Yes. So from where is this text? There was a Oh, the, 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 the text word is from the Word of the Lord, the same collection of Frank's yes, words. Yes, and which number? Okay, oh, okay. Yeah. Just, uh, uh, this is one of the minor. I thought it was too secret to mention on the... Oh, yes, no, I <laughs> Oh, maybe i tell you later. I okay, yeah. it's, it's, it's simply, it's, it's going on uh, recalling descriptions of the paradise. <coughs> of the Jewish paradise. 
And so this is very interesting when you're speaking about the revolving <coughs> movement mm -hmm. going on. The next step could be, and then he's citing some techniques, uh, uh, speaking about the old text from Middle Ages, uh, speaking about the sitting in the in a row of mm -hmm. seats for the in, 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 in the, in the afterward in the gun heaven. So it it, it's, it sounds uh, really interesting from the from the use of the motive. Oh, okay. Okay, otherwise I have to read the book. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, first of all, thank you for a very, very detailed <coughs> and, and eye-opening talk. I must confess that uh, after you, your exposition of uh, this um, history of, of Frankism, I, I, I think the Middle Ages actually is very subtle compared to this very diverse and very problematic kind of uh, um, religion seeking that you were yes. kind of uh, or Jakob Fahn's personal journey. Um, I'm, I'm wondering about um, the people he's writing to and who he's trying to convey the message to. I mean, you, you've described in his biography a, a man who, first of all, seems very uh, steadfast on his ideas because he's willing to sit in a virtual prison for 13 mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. in order to still accommodate for, for his beliefs. Uh, so he so he's uh, he's convinced he's convinced or he's going through a journey that is that seems very convincing to him. Um, my question is about who are his followers and who is he writing to? Um, what language is he using? Who is he addressing? What is their mindset? What is their world of associations? You were referring to uh, Slavic myths. You were referring to uh, ideas that are circulating among Jews in the Polish sphere. Is there any engagement in Yiddish? Is this in Polish? Is this in German? Um, to what extent does he assume knowledge among his followers? What depth of knowledge? Mm -hmm. um, Kabbalistic knowledge, um, regular Jewish knowledge, um, folk beliefs. Um, I'm trying to kind of fish out from what, what you're claiming, who he's addressing, who's his crowd, and who does he expect to uh, um, engage in his position that he's advocating, apart from himself, in his per what seems to be a very personal journey. Yeah, those are actually uh, very significant questions to answer the... Said, what language was more written? Polish. Uh, Polish. Polish, but oh. the, we don't know which language uh, was used in the original. Huh. So some say huh. this is a translation from Hebrew, huh. but, but actually it's almost impossible to know that. So what version do, are we working with? In other words, when was it produced? When was it printed? Um, uh, it's uh, the the text is not uh, has not been printed yet. Ah, uh, the po uh, yeah, the Polish one was uh, kind of edited okay. and uh, translated into English and also into Hebrew. Mm -hmm. But uh, the original language is still. Uh, you know, uh, unknown. Is it authenticated? Do we know that this is his mind, or is it someone else? I mean, you, you assume uh, there, there are mm -hmm, a lot of mm -hmm. logical assumptions along the way that you're kind of um, somewhat blurring. Um, yes. Tell us a bit about <coughs> the text, maybe. Well, uh, actually, Pavel Macheko argues about this mm -hmm. uh, matter in detail in his one of his articles. And <coughs> well, uh, okay. So uh, the point is, uh, the text we have written in Polish, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of uh, mixtures of uh, languages, Hebrew and uh, Yiddish, mm -hmm. and also uh, Turkish. Mm -hmm. So. This is this tells us the the language world of Jacob Frank. He used so many uh, languages to persuade uh, various people all around the Turkey and, uh, and Poland. So, uh, and he was raised in uh, the this multilingual mm -hmm. yeah, circumstance. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's 
Yeah, I don't think there's any scholarly contestation that it's his, but you can be the first who can do that. So would like I think that most most people assume that it's assume really that it's his his own work. It's, it's yeah. yeah. But we know that uh, he could speak and understand Polish. Mm. That, that's uh, obvious. And uh, the first question: To whom Is he? he yeah. yeah uh, spoke to about his doctrine. Uh, I used the word Frankist and about 3,000 Jews converted to Catholicism in Lubo but uh, it's very difficult to know if all of them really believed in Frank and uh, his doctrine. We know that he had uh, a dozen of uh, very close believers around him, always, also in Turkey and in in Poland as well. Intentionally, or is that a typological? In other words, does he assemble twelve? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, I, I, I just said uh, dozen, 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 but uh, oh, yeah, okay. sometimes uh, maybe twenty. Yeah. Ah, okay. So. The, the close believers were not so many. And uh, so the, the amount of the converts in Poland uh, is like, uh, I think they, are, they, they wanted to uh, change their identity. Jewish identity to uh, to overcome the, the difficult situation they are they were facing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they could be a, be Christian and they uh, they could uh, they could get the status of the, the Christian citizens. Mm -hmm. So I think that they the the reason of the of the converts uh, the conversion of the, the the most of the followers was not uh, really yeah, yeah like uh, they they don't they re don't really agree to the Frank's teaching. Mm -hmm. But they use it as a conduit into Christianity. Yes, mm -hmm. and on top of that, uh, scholars talked about Sabadians in Poland. Mm -hmm. But the identities are very ambiguous. Mm -hmm. Who who are Sabadians in Poland? Mm -hmm. I don't think all of them understand the teaching of uh, Nathan of Gaza or uh, Ibeshitz or Frank. So we think you take a, a broader because when you were saying that this is mostly a 18th century rabbinical. Uh, but if you take it broader, like for instance today the Dunmer, mm -hmm. at least the, the ones left, uh, they say we believe chapter 3 is the Messiah. They have mm -hmm. all different beliefs, yeah, they they different they belief traditions, but mm -hmm. if you say like, well, there is a tradition coming beginning with chapter 3 that somehow refers to chapter 3 as the Messiah or somebody else who is the incarnation, I think you you shouldn't talk about the term Sabbathianism as a as a almost like a figment of, of rabbinical opposition to whatever heresy there is. No, there is really a tradition of of Sabbathian beliefs, and we are also discovering more and more. But like I the think the, the, the thing. how they knew the 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 religion that the, the idea of Sabbathianism. Songs. 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 It was a singing movement. Sabbatianism was producing the main ideas through songs. This this is the way how Sabbatianism came to, came to Amsterdam. Was yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. This, was this is yeah. I think the Do Dr. Bielkaya argues about this yeah. point, but uh, <coughs> you have to find the song books. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's that's true. Uh, all the all this about Sabbatians. Uh, really loved singing. That's true. But uh, songs are not everything about Sabadians. 
No, for sure. <laughs> on the other hand, this is a quite popular, yeah, they, yeah, actually, uh, pop, popular tool in this time to, pr to promote Christianity, mm -hmm. uh, to promote uh, religious movements. And I think the one of the one of the elements, uh, if you find a phone book or if you find some songs referred to, yes, agreed, as, yes, as mm -hmm. uh, heretical songs or mm -hmm. something like this, you have found something sabbatical. Even mm -hmm. if we are ugly and undefined, we have the music. Yeah. <laughs> Danny, yeah, I want to ask about the disputations. Uh, who were the participants? Were they forced by the uh, government? <coughs> were how did they come about? Because we don't have a public Catholic versus rabbinic Judaism type disputations we have in the Middle Ages. So what were these disputations? Oh, so the, the question is, uh, what what kind of disputation were? Who were the participants who uh, <coughs> okay. who initiated on, on the side of Frank? Uh, actually, Frank himself didn't participate in any disputations, but his followers. When he was in Turkey, his followers who remained there participated in the disputation. Uh, we know against whom? Against uh, rabbis, not not uh, not only rabbis, but the whole uh, community of Jewish people. The the disputation was organized by uh, uh, the church. And the two sides participating. Were they forcibly? Were they, were they no, forced? no, no, no. Uh, the uh, especially about the second disputation. The uh, this disputation is the condition for them to uh, convert to Christianity. So they were willing to have this dis disputation, but rabbis didn't want to come to the place. So it took... Uh, so they were forced? The yes, place. so they were, they were actually forcibly summoned to this dis disputation. The Catholic Church or the civil authorities forced the rabbis to debate with the Frankists? Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. In an attempt to convince the rabbis to convert? No, not rabbis. Rabbis, rabbis didn't need to. <coughs> no, but the, the church wanted the rabbis. Just, yes. What is the interest of the church to organize such a disputation? Mm -hmm. Is to convert Jews by ways of the Sabbateans, mm -hmm. you know? Yes. Yeah. Do? I have uh, two or three short comments and a broader one. Thank you first. Uh, fascinating. You didn't mention <coughs> in your very updated, updated bibliography uh, uh, Chenchi's uh, Shishman book, um, uh, in which he especially traces the history of the Dorne community up to, to this time, up to today, uh, showing uh, on the one hand many, uh, you know, a tradition of relationship between between the uh, Sabbateans and Frankists, and not uh, episodical ones, but from time to time, if I remember well his book. Uh, between Sabbat, 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 Dornay, sorry, Dornay and, Fran Frankies. and Frankies were, were in touch even very lately during the 18th century. Uh, he, he shows that, but perhaps it's not my domain. Secondly, regarding the the ceremony of, uh, of 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 the lights, the candle lights, at least according to to Shishman, there is ground that it happens, it will happen. These orgies concerning the, uh, 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 certain kinds of Sabbatist darkness subsext, and this has to do also with orgiastic you know, habitudes within the Frankist uh, movement, it, 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 it makes sense. The second, sh sorry, short comment of everything is relative, <laughs> is in, in relation. I remember you, you, you mentioned the specificity of, of uh, Jacob Franz vis-a-vis -vis the idea of a, of a female messiah. 
uh, his, his daughter. I remember at least an analogous ca case of Guillaume Postel regarding Joanna, rega regarding the nun Joanna from Venice, playing with the Shekhinah, etc. He also ascribed to her a kind of female messianic uh, role. I didn't know that. And, yeah, and you have here in Israel the more, the, you know, the, the, the more fantastic <coughs> scholar on this issue, Judith Weiss. Mm -hmm. I will mm -hmm. suggest you to be in touch with her. And this, of course, relates us to the relationship between, of course, uh, Jewish uh, Kabbalah with uh, Christian Kabbalah in the, and so on and so forth. And finally, my, my more broader comment has to do with that and with us, whether it, it is a agnostic uh, way of knowing secrets or if it was intended as a religion. And my impression, but after hearing you, is that what appears to me fascinating is that Das is a combination of Gnosticism together with Joachimism. Mm -hmm. The idea of Joachim da Fiore, mm -hmm. according to which they will arrive at third stage in the history of the mankind before the yeah, coming of the it. Antichrist. And this third stage mm -hmm. is the stage of the Holy Ghost. And, <coughs> and some of the interpretation of this, of this last stage is, is an antinomic uh, last stage in which you don't need any more churches and popes and, and institutions because it is Christian but transcending a uh, Christianity. And what I, I, I think one of the, the reasons why perhaps there is an in, inherent failure in Jacob Frank's idea of that is precisely because on the one hand that is an agnostic way and on the other hand that's it at the same time a new kind of universal religion one is historical supersessionist and the other in order to be agnostic you have to stay true <laughs> in, in in one case or in another and this led me to the final uh, comment for me it's, it's fascinating perhaps i didn't understand you well some of us we are very uh, we, we remember certainly the classic a article written by Gershon Scholem, Mitzvah Haba Be'Avera, following Cardoso, etc. He summarized the idea, the Sabbatian idea, let's uh, resume it, that in order to attain, uh, you know, to attain sanctity, you have to make a, a profanation of it, uh, for instance, through Islam. But here, in Jacob, uh, in Jacob <coughs> Frank, we have a kind of uh, asymmetrical, idea, uh, I, I believe, that is not only mitzvah ba be avera, but also avera ba ayedei mitzvah. Because you, you mentioned that if in order to attain light, you have to pass through darkness, mm -hmm. that means that in order to attain light, you have to be Jewish. But in the condition of light, uh, Frank never talks about the mitzvah. Or yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, I am not speaking about uh, the practice of command, but the very idea that in order to attain light, you have to pass through a uh, darkness, mm -hmm. and you mentioned that for him, darkness is Judaism. That means that only a Jew or a person who is fully aware of its Jewishness, Jewishness mm -hmm. could arrive to light. In, a, in other way, we have a paradox here. You, we have a kind of paradoxical Gnosticism in which in order to attain freedom, you have to always keep somehow a link with Judaism, even if it is only a matter of biography <coughs> or or origin, and this has to do with the failure I am mentioning. Well, it doesn't se it seem to be not only Judaism, but any of the other religions. So yes, so but mostly also Judaism. Yeah. Because Judaism is, according to what I heard from you, mostly 
uh, related to carnality, to, 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 to the Tao, to the Tao. And in order to attain that, you have to be Jewish. Otherwise, yes. how could you attain? Yes. Uh, uh, and this is, the, this is the Gnostic part of that, but the other part of that is the Joachimite uh, idea. And you have, and here, at least for me, it was very interesting, because for me, it completes what we have, thanks to Sholem and others, uh, concerning the, the, the relationship of some Frankies, not, not, not a lot of them, Tobruska, for instance, vis-a-vis -vis his positive support of the French Revolution. Because it's a part of a new religion, a new stage, mm -hmm. adapt, okay? Yes, actually, uh, the target of Frank was uh, not, not other religions. I mean, uh, his target was only for Jews. So he didn't try to uh, persuade other, other peoples to uh, become his religion. Yeah. Thank you very much. I didn't see me. Oh, Peter. Uh, first of all, thank you for the for this V uh, V movement because it's very visual. You showed with the uh, the, the beginning. You showed the uh, the visit of uh, Frank in Saloniki, and you showed a very typical emblem of uh, Shaftism, uh on a, in the cemeteries, this is the moth. This is the this butterfly uh, element, but it's the moth. It's not a, it's not a butterfly. Oh, it, it's not a butterfly. No, if you ask okay. the, if you uh, the, you can ask uh, the people here in the university, a specialist, and they are telling you what kind of animal it is, and uh, and it's it, it's connected to darkness, mm -hmm. and it's connected to death and rebirth. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. And this is exactly yeah. the this V movement you mm -hmm. brought on the other hand. Now I've go through to all the graveyards again and look for a V movement. <coughs> Especially in the northern parts, but uh, to so they, they they share the same same idea. No, I think he he met the idea in Saloniki, with his going through the death to the life, to the moth, and he took it back to Podolia and translated it to this Polish uh, um, uh, the waters and going down and going up. Yes. So uh, I think one picture. One picture now, this, this, is, uh, this is in the Mediterranean, sh uh, Shabtai, mm -hmm. and the, this what you, the text you brought here is very visual for uh, giving a symbol, uh, symbolic act, uh, like going down and going up. And so all, all we have to do now is to go to the art historians and ask them, please go to the epi epitaphs. <laughs> and the biologists also. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow. No, I, I, I asked the I asked after Finler, I asked the the the, uh, the, the biologist what kind of animal it is, and they were, were speaking about two kinds. Of this was the most the conflict uh, to identify. It's so clearly depicted that they can identify. Yeah, but but uh, but this this symbol it was very spread also in in, in Western Europe. Metamorphosis. Yeah, it's not specific. No, not specific. The general subject, not. But that they used yeah. one specific animal existing in the Turkish world, from here down the Galilee up to uh, yeah. up to Bulgaria. Uh, this is the moth depicted by the Shaftaeans on their gravestones. So, was this motif uh, not only in the? In the in in the uh, in Salonika, among there we in Salonika people. and in Istanbul we have the, the most uh, representations. I don't. I, I have to ask my friend uh, 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 there's a Papo where he found it more in uh, more places in the Balkans. But I, I, these gravestones are uh, signed yes. for uh, 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 As far as I remember from Shishman book. Mm -hmm. I remember that they were later heraldic representations from the 19th century on, I think. 
that is not so early as mm. but there are some, uh, some uh, okay some uh, most of them are late yes, yes, yes. Mm. I found no reference to moth or butterfly in the uh, praising songs okay. of Dom. Yes. So this may be simply historical reasons that it developed afterwards, after, after the 17th century. I have another question concerning, uh, kind of fits in what, what Dov was uh, his, his last comment. Um, and it, it, it might connect to that. It's like the role of conversion, because you have on the one hand, it seems to be like the, the, the stingy tradition of Nathan of Gaza, in which only the Messiah converts, and it's almost like a deceptive conversion because Islam is the realm of evil. Uh, and then you have the other tradition in which conversion is uh, is is for everybody so so the a, a large group of Dunma later Frank is convert and and uh, so there's something I think also there so on the one hand you have this ambition of 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 getting to the correct the only right religion mm -hmm. and on the other hand you have the, the, this this need of, of dwelling within existing religions converting to this religion which is I, I feel like the, the the V movement is on the one hand it's a very interesting movement on the other side it's 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 almost too dualistic as if as if you convert to Christianity or Islam only because it's something bad and then you go, you come out in th this like for instance I know that that Pavel writes about uh, that, that chapter 3 <coughs> talks about Islam in very positive terms whereas in, in, in the historiography of the Sabbatia movement it has become too much painted as this this deceptive this 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 descent into evil whereas chapter three didn't really look at it as like this so can you say something about but yes conversion right. in, in 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 a sense that is more than just going into the realm of evil tricking the outside world and then emerging again either as jews or as this distinct <coughs> new religion so it, it, it is nathan that emphasizes this point mm -hmm. The, the dichotomy between the light yeah. and darkness. Yeah. So, yeah. His image was like the the, the emotional movement of Shabtetsvi. Mm -hmm. But Shabtetsvi <coughs> seemingly didn't agree to exactly to this idea of of nation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because what, what what I remember like what how Paul analyzed, and I think also uh, Judah Libes, uh, uh, Shabtai Tzvi's own, own views, is almost like this notion of a personal God, who is almost a Hegelian notion, who, who prefers different religions. So, so God is basically not committed to one specific religion, but can uh, move his favor to new religions. And, and basically Frank is coming up with Possibly another religion, but then I'm, I don't even know. It's a failure. It's almost like God moves to existing religions, and so I really like you, how you said, like it's 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 like it, there's this tension between Gnosticism and and this Yokomite movement. Mm -hmm. So so in a way, like it, I feel like it. We tend to too much to think in terms of moving to the right religion, whereas moving between religions is part of this this tradition. Is the core, perhaps? Is the core? I think so. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah, though. I, ju I just want want to mention that I I, <coughs> I know some people today in Poland or in England they are elaborating on the Frankist uh, heritage and myth in order to claim. <coughs> a uh, kind of quintessential way to be to be Jewish or to be a Polish that is you are not just Jewish and you are not just Polish but a kind of idea who is embraced by people who are against a, a essentialist identities who are often related to the radical left like Agatha uh, Agatha uh, uh, Robson uh, Bielski or Bielski Robson and others who they, they are celebrating all these movements because they are defying a closer, clo uh, closer ideas of identities 
Uh, you, you have to transgress, you have to look after, and you have to be in a kind of Heraclitean quest of, 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 of meaning. And for them, today, uh, uh, this postmodern idea of Frankism is very appealing. So do they use the ideas of Frankism? They, they, they use and they celebrate. And I can send you some articles written uh, written by a Polish philosopher, uh, according to which for him, Frankist is the best way to be a Polish and a Jew and a human being, because you are trusting in Judaism, Christianity, Islam, uh, he 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 heterosexuality, homosexuality, everything <laughs> you are going on. You know, it's the embodiment of the postmodern idea of progress. I think the and same story is very, very Dunme, no? I think. In Dunme, in a Turkish yeah. context, yes. Not, not the hardcore no, Dunme, but the... the no, but the Turkish, the Turkish idea of Dunme. Uh, no, but which they're, already, is, they're putting on them but all... But that's a very negative. So yeah, it's yeah. a very yeah. negative. No, no, not only... You go to Poland and the yeah. uh, tour guide will give you a story about Frank. Yeah. Yeah. They mention Frank, it becomes a sort of... Especially that they're aware of the connection of Adam Miskiewicz. So that's kind yes. of a positive image, I think. In Turkey, Turkey, in Turkey, no, yeah. it's cons conspiration. Now, with some of the Turkish, uh, how do you call it, like alternative, so not the hardcore Dunmer, but people who discovered them their background, and they're critical of the <coughs> government, and they're critical of the Islamists, and of the anti Islamists who all hate Dunma as like standing for the Jewish country, whatever. And there you have exactly this notion of like the Dunma were like the enlightened, sort of liberal, uh, so yeah, it's there. Yeah. Yeah? Maybe, maybe just a small point, I think. Yes. And another thing is very interesting here, and I think somehow complicated our understanding and maybe our discussion, especially with, within we are uh, speaking about interreligion, etc. The, the term da, das here, all this, the, the term that we, in Hebrew, today we speak in English, but so easily we translate to religion, is Frank, or in the 18th century, and this is the period in which Kant says that the Jews <laughs> don't have a religion, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, so I think it, it emphasized very much. And I think here we have to, you know, to, to look at, the, at, at, at this uh, 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 different concept of what's going behind. And because you said, of course, the dat, dat, and das, mm -hmm. and the dat that come here, but the, the dat still at that time is mostly a practice mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And going from the different practice that you know, it's moving from the practice of the Jews to the practice of the of the Muslims. Mm -hmm. That's here yeah. uh, what what God can. But they have also lots of knowledge. You know, yeah. In, in a way, what you said about God being beyond beyond the religion, you know, it's not only Sabbatianism. It's a different concept of what that is. Yes. It's a practice. It's not a belief in God as we so easily tend. And I think from so that point it of view, it's, it's, it's fascinating to analyze this text. And of course, we don't have the Polish here. Or the, the, you know, what is the word <coughs> as in Polish for something he, that we would he uses, translate? As, Frank as uses uh, uh, the word Religia, religio, yeah, religio, religio okay. to to refer to other religions mm -hmm. such as Christianity or Islam. Mm -hmm. so, but okay. for him, religia is uh, inferior religion, mm. and that is, and that is uh, yeah. Enlightened. Again, it's a ladder. I, I don't know. And that is uh, Judaism. Again, we're putting it into our words. That is a superior religion. No, it's superior to religion. It's something yes. else. Yes. Yeah, and here again, I think yes. maybe really the the the, the, yes. the ideas of uh, of uh, J. Michelson, etc., to to relate it to the well, Western esotericism is a very big term, especially then. But this uh, uh, occultist and esoteric ideas of really of this path. Which is beyond the different the different religions we face, etc. That maybe we have it here also in in, in his idea of das da. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Das. 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 Do we know anything about um, what writings he had access to yeah, for certain points of his life? I mean, being <coughs> in, in a Chancellor of Monastery would have opened a certain library to him. But what, what is he educated on to begin with? Um, do we know anything that traveled with him? as his traveling library, mm -hmm. um, just beyond quoting, you know, um, um, 
scripture disease or anything else. <coughs> we have uh, no evidence about Frank's education, especially in his uh, uh, childhood. Uh, he was wondering about all the regions between Turkey and Poland, and so oh, I think uh, it was uh, really difficult to have uh, the traditional Jewish education for him. But after that, uh, as far as I remember, uh, no specific uh, the title of writing Jewish uh, literature mm -hmm. is mentioned in the words of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, obviously he knows uh, the Bible and the Talmud mm -hmm. and other rabbinical literature. But the knowledge is not so uh, deep. I mean, uh, he just knew. Uh, several passages, the famous passages, and he used very freely mm -hmm. to uh, his will. Mm -hmm. The was quite proud of being, being ignorant. Yes, exactly. And I think <coughs> to a certain degree it's true because yes, uh, yes. no time in what you to, to have deep rabbinic education, definitely no. Uh, so, so really, I think it's things that he picks uh, yes. from the Jewish background. Maybe then when he thinks, and he can he can read the, the possibly he had later more Christian right. education than Jewish one. Yes, and, and another source apart from the you know bit of rabbinic and Bible studies, of course, Kabbalah and, and Zohar, which again possibly through translation you have Latino translation in the Midrash. I think about the same time. So again, even that, although I think everything is very much in in. Zoharic uh, uh, imagery here, possibly also that quite a superficial knowledge. I don't know how he much he knew Aramaic. It was uh, no yeah. Uh, he he knew. He used it. Term. Yeah, he used it. He, 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 he remembered. Yeah. And and as you said, he used uh, the word proselak, uh, pro, uh, prosta, to uh, to refer to the ignorance, mm. and he's. Ah. Post, very uh, post, post, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, right. That's uh, he. He was very proud of being ignorant, and so that's how he uh, attracted uh, the yeah ignorant people, the the, the, the normal people, mm -hmm. to his religion. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Or do we end with the word ignorance? <laughs> <laughs> Great, well thanks a lot, Shane. Thank, uh, thank you very much.